Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hi everyone, this is Lawrence Soripala. I'm your instructor for CSE 4010, uh, Contemporary Computer Architecture. And this is your uh, accompanying lab video for lab number four, which regards uh, multiplexers. So um, ideally, you shouldn't be watching this video until after uh, we've already, you've already seen the video for uh, like the lecture for chapter four, where we talk about the processor. So some, at some point during this lecture, I mentioned the MIPS data path. So basically I explained, or I should have explained, uh, right around this part here actually, I explained that uh, the control unit is the part of the MIPS data path. This whole circuit here, this is the MIPS data path, see? And the way that this works is that um, if you recall from before, um, all of the instructions for a program written in C code after it gets converted by an assembler to assembly code and then the compiler to machine code, uh, that those instructions that are in machine code would all exist in this uh, circuit here, which is called instruction memory. And then you have another circuit here called program counter, which is in charge of pointing to the very next uh, line of machine code when it executes. Now, depending on whether or not the line of machine code that we're looking at is an R-type instruction, an I-type instruction, or a J-type instruction, uh, one of uh, three things is going to happen. So it's going to get analyzed here, and it's going to be analyzed by something here called the control unit. Now, the purpose of the control unit is that it controls three multiplexers here, okay? So the purpose of these multiplexers is that it controls the flow of data depending on whether uh, the instruction that we're looking at currently is an R-type, an I-type, or a J-type, okay? So these multiplexers here, these are going to be the main focus of our lab. I'm going to show you how exactly to make a decision-making circuit, okay? So depending on the input that the control circuit has, uh, it's going to tell this multiplexer here to choose between one of these two inputs, choose one of them, and then make that as their output, okay? Uh, the same thing happens here. This multiplexer is receiving two different inputs, depending on the selection input that this multiplexer gets, it's going to choose between these two and then have that be the outputs. Same thing over here. This multiplexer receives two inputs. Uh, and depending on the selection input that it gets from the control unit, it's going to choose between one of these two inputs and have that be the output wire. Okay? So, um, so, so far you've done a lot of, uh, if you've done labs one, two, and three so far, um, you'll see, you would find that circuits uh, comprise uh, a lot of the going ons inside of the computer and inside of the processor too. But one thing that differentiates a, com uh, a computer from a calculator is that a computer can do something that a calculator can't. It can make decisions. It can say, if this, then that, right? And the circuit that allows the computer to make a decision is the multiplexer, okay? So, uh, let me get out of here. Discard. And now that you have enough context, we can go ahead and look into this lab. So, I'm going to read this introduction out loud. So, in electronics, a multiplexer, or a MUX, also known as a data selector, is a device that selects between several input signals and forwards the selected input into a single output line. The selection is directed by a separate set of digital inputs known as selection lines. A multiplexer of two to the power of n inputs has n selection lines. So for instance, um, if a multiplexer has two inputs, um, two would be equal to two to the power of one. So a two uh, by one multiplexer would have one selection line, right? However, if we were looking at a multiplexer that has four inputs, four is equal to 
to 2 to the power of 2. So a 4 uh, by by one multiplexer ha would have two selection lines, okay? And then as for a an eight by one multiplexer, eight is equal to two to the power of three. So an eight by one multiplexer would have three selection lines, okay? And then you can repeat the same pattern for larger multiplexers as well, okay? So uh, what is the function of the multiplexer in the MIPS data path? Uh, that's exactly what I explained earlier. For the MIPS data path, Three multiplexers are used to direct the flow of input whenever it sees an R-type, an I-type, or a J-type instruction. Its selection wires are controlled by the control unit, okay? So uh, for this lab, you will create two multiplexers. Uh, in part A, you will create a four by one multiplexer that takes six inputs. It has to be six because you have four input wires and two selection wires, okay? Uh, and one output wire. Uh, four of the inputs are data inputs A, B, C, and D, and the other two are selection inputs, selection 0 and selection 1. Uh, you will code as follows. Um, in part, um, if selection 1 equals 0, 0, uh, if, if the combined, uh, if, uh, so if you watch one of the previous lab videos already, uh, you would know that the purpose of the squiggly brackets is to treat two, uh, is to treat multiple uh, single bits, uh, single bit wires as us one uh, full wire. So the purpose of this is let's say if selection one and selection zero equals zero zero. This basically says if selection one equals zero and selection zero equals zero, out is going to be equal to A. If selection one is equal to zero, but selection zero is equal to one, we're going to output selection B. If selection one is equal to one and selection zero is equal to zero, we'll output C. If selection one is equal to one and selection zero is equal to one, we'll output D. And then in part B, you, we, you will use what we learned in part A to create a uh, eight by one multiplexer, and this will eventually build up to lab six, where we code the MIPS data path. Okay. So over here, uh, these these are diagrams of these are circuit diagrams of what uh, what multiplexers look like. So for a four by one multiplexer, because there's four input wires here. 4, 4 is equal to 2 to the power of 2, so that's why you see two selection wires here. So uh, if, uh, if, uh, <clears throat> so depending on what combination of values the selection wires have, uh, output will be equal to either A, B, C, or D, right? So as we said before, if, uh, selection one was equal to zero and selection zero is equal to zero, we would output A. Over here, out would be equal to whatever A is. So if A was equal to one and selection one and selection zero were both equal to zero, output would be equal to one because that's what A is equal, right? Uh, and then if, if B was equal to one, um, the only time output would be equal to B is if, uh, is if, Selection 1 was equal to 0 and selection 0 was equal to 1. Uh, this would cause it to output selection B. So in that case, output would be what be equal to whatever B is, okay? Um, if selection, uh, if selection uh, 1 was equal to 1 and selection 0 was equal to 0, uh, it would output C. And if, if selection 1 and selection 0 were both equal to 1, out would be equal to whatever D is, okay? And over here is an eight by one multiplexer. So uh, in this situation, we have eight input wires here. And because eight is equal to two to the power of three, we would have to have three selection wires here, okay? So uh, this is what I'm talking about when I'm saying that uh, multiplexers are a decision-making circuit, okay? Okay, so, um, I think before we actually get started doing part A, um, there's actually one thing that I need 
you to observe uh, about this code. So I'm actually, in order to implement the multiplexer, I'm actually implementing something here that you haven't seen before in the previous labs. And what that thing is, is actually the ternary operator. So uh, basically, it's the ternary operator basically looks like this. So uh, ter ternary basically means three. So this is an operator that requires three inputs here. So the way that it works is that um, um, you have a variable var, and then you set this equal to uh, something in here separated by a question mark, separated by something here, separated by a colon, and then you have a, a third thing here. So basically, the way that the ternary operator works is that um, this here is a condition, okay? So I'm gonna write down condition here. So whatever this condition is, if this, if this condition here uh, evaluates to be true, uh, so I'll put C equals true. In that, in that case, uh, if the condition here equals true, then var will be equal to whatever value is over here. Okay. However, if uh, the condition was equal, equal to false, so if I say C equals false, then var will be equal to whatever this value is, ignoring this value. Okay. So uh, that's actually a new thing in Verilog that I haven't showed you yet. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you a, uh, a documentation page about this right now. So I actually have it open over here. Oh wait, this isn't it. One second. It's actually uh, this one here. So this one's a little bit easier to read. So uh, the Verilog conditional operator, also known as the Verilog ternary operator. Uh, have you ever come across a strange looking piece of Verilog code that has a question mark in the middle of it? Uh, in the middle of the line, it looks so bizarre. They're supposed to go at the end of sentences, right? However, in Verilog, the question mark is an operator and is a very useful one. So the way that it works is that uh, exactly what I said here. It has a condition. If it evaluates to be true, then the variable will be equal to whatever this is, ignoring this. If the condition is false, the variable will be equal to this, ignoring this, okay? So it's a, uh, don't get confused by what the ternary operator does. It's very simple to understand, right? Now, what might get complicated is if you're using multiple at once, like the way I'm doing here. So I think it's a better idea that before we go ahead and do part A, uh, which is creating the four by one multiplexer, let's take it a step back in terms of complexity and first build a two by one multiplexer. And then hopefully when you build the eight by one multiplexer, it would be relatively easy for you. So uh, let me go over here. So um, actually, let me, let me grab these two first. So. So I will go ahead and put these here. Yeah, let's expand the canvas. Cool. I need more canvas room than this. Let me do this. Uh, size, I'll put this here and I'll increase the width. There we go. So uh, to recap from before, this is a four by one multiplexer. This is an eight by one multiplexer. So let me, uh, very crudely draw what a two by one multiplexer might look like. Okay. So I'm going to draw a rectangle here like this. Uh, so it's only going to have two uh, inputs called A and B because it's a two by one multiplexer, right? It's only going to have a uh, one output that. And it's only going to have one selection input called selection zero. Okay. 
and ta-da, this is our two by one multiplexer. So let me write that down. Two by one multiplexer. Okay, so the way that this two by one multiplexer would work is that uh, A would be equal to something, right? So let's say that A was equal to zero and let's say that B was equal to one. If selection here happened to be equal to zero, uh, then uh, if selection was equal to zero, this would mean that outputs would equal to whatever A is. And in this case, A is equal to zero. If selection zero is equal to one, this would result in if out, uh, outputs would be equal to whatever B is, okay? So the ternary operator is useful here. So let's go ahead and open, uh, let's open Visual Studio Code and start uh, writing this out, okay? So I'm going to need a Visual Studio Code here. All right, so what you probably wanna gonna do is go to the folder that contains your lab four. So I'm gonna open a folder here. I'll go here, here here, here. Now I'm going to go to lab, well, uh, I'm, you're, you're gonna have two folders here. Uh, your lab 4A folder is gonna contain your four by one multiplexer and then your lab 4B folder, which I'll go ahead and create now, is gonna contain your uh, eight by one multiplexer. But I'm going to make a new folder here uh, call it uh, 2x1 mux uh, just to show you uh, what uh, so I'm not doing part A yet I'm going to code a 2 by 1 multiplexer and then I'm we're going to work together to make the uh, 4 by 1 okay so uh, you, you don't have to be coding here not until you do part A just pay attention here until we get to part A, okay? So I'm gonna call this, uh, so I'm gonna call this. Uh, so I'm gonna need to have a Verilog file here that contains my module for the two by one multiplex, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna call this mux2x1.v. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna declare a new module. So module mux underscore two x one. Uh, so our circuit here, is gonna have three wires. Three of them will be input wires and one of them will be an output wire, right? And they're gonna be called A, B, selection zero and out respectively. So I'm gonna say A, comma b comma cell zero comma out okay and then i'll say inputs e um so the inputs are always going to be equal the inputs here are going to be a b and cell zero so a comma b comma cell zero and then the output is going to be uh we only have out, one output wire and it's gonna be called out. So this is the part where I would use my ternary operator, okay? So uh, here's how I would do it. I would say assign out is going to be equal to, now remember, when I use the ternary operator, I need two things. I need the question mark and I need the colon. So the thing that goes before the question mark is gonna be my condition. And my condition in this case is gonna be called cell zero. So zero. Okay. So remember, if selection zero, selection zero is going to be controlling what out is going to be equal to. So uh, the way that I want this to work is that if selection zero was equal to one, or in this case, or another way that you could say it is if selection zero was true, output is going to be equal to B. So over here, I'm gonna put, uh, between the question mark and the colon, I'm gonna put uh, my B wire, okay? And then uh, if selection zero 
was false, in other words, if the selection zero is equal to zero, I'm going to be output A, okay? So that's all I need for my uh, two by one multiplexer, right? And, and that's all I need, right? Okay, so in order to see if this actually works, I'm gonna need a test bench here, right? So I'm going to make a mux 2x1 underscore tv dot v. So uh, in order to, to construct my test bench, I'm gonna need my uh, backtick time scale one nanosecond over one nanosecond in include uh, I'm going to include my dot v file which I called uh, mux 2x 1 dot v so mux 2x 1 dot v and then I'm going to declare my test bench here module mux 2x1 underscore tb comma and you know it's a test bench because it doesn't have open close parentheses after it now I need to declare some wires uh, I'm the way that you declare input wires is you say register so reg uh, I'll, I need three input wires a b and cell zero so I'll, I'll differentiate them from the ones that I have here by capitalizing it so say a comma b comma cell zero and then I'll say and then I need one output wire called O or outputs so the way I denote uh, output wires is that I use the keyword wire so I'll say wire uppercase O okay so now that I have this now I need to declare an instance of my multiplexer now, uh, this module is called mux underscore 2x1. So I need to declare one of that. So mux underscore 2x1. And now what this basically does is that it declares a new instance of this module here. Now I need to give this a name. So I'll just call it UUT for unit under test. And uh, modules are like functions. Uh, and in functions, I need to pass parameters to it in open close parentheses. In this case, the parameters are my wires. So in this case, I'm gonna pass these four wires as the wires for my multiplexer. So I'm gonna put them in order. So I'm gonna say A comma B comma cell zero comma big O, okay? All right, so now I say initial begin, this sets up my clock. And then I need to have a place to view the waveforms afterwards after uh, I run the thing. So I'm going to say I'll just, I'll just copy I'm going to say dump file and I say the name in which I want my uh, VCD file to be called and then I will say uh, right when the program starts, I'll have A equals zero and then B equal one. You can have them switch the other way around actually. So you can have A be one and B be zero, but uh, this is just for the sake of demonstration. And then uh, I'm not gonna change what A and B are equal to. The only thing I'm really gonna change is cell zero, okay? So I'm gonna say cell zero is going to be equal to, uh, and I'm gonna say the one bit binary number m number that's equal to the decimal value of zero, okay? And then I will wait 20 nanoseconds. And then after I wait 20 nanoseconds, I will say cell zero equals the one bit decimal number that equals the, excuse me, the one bit binary number, number that equals the decimal value of one, okay? Then I will wait 20 more nanoseconds, okay? And then uh, I would like to display something to the console to let it know that it, to let me know that it actually finished. So I'm gonna say uh, dollar sign display complete. I think that's good enough. 
and then after I end, I'll, I'll I have to finish this module by saying end module. Okay. Okay. So I will save all. And now to run the thing, I need to say control back tick. And then I need to run the appropriate commands, right? So the command to make the VCD file is iverilog dash o uh, mux 2x1 underscore td dot vvp mux 2x1 underscore td dot v. Okay, so that checks out. Now I gotta say vvp and then mux. 2x1 underscore td dot v. Oh, syntax error. My test bench on line one. What did I do wrong? Huh? What did I do wrong? So it's on this page here. Hmm. Give me one sec to figure this out. Okay, I found out what I was doing wrong. I, I have to say uh, dot v v p instead of dot v. So after I make this, um, now it created my waveforms here in this VCD file. So now I'll say gtk wave, and then I'll click here, file, open new tab. Then I will click this VCD file, open. I will click this, and then. Uh, ideally, I want to say my A and B wires first, so I'll append these first. So A is equal to 0, which it is, B is equal to 1, which it is, and then I'll append my selection next, and then uh, what I should find is that when selection is equal to 0, uh, O will be equal to A, and when selection is equal to 1, O will be equal to B. So let's append O, let's see, when selection is equal to 0, O should be equal to A. When selection is equal to 1, O should be equal to B, which it is. Okay. So the reason why I created this 2x1 multiplexer is to just demonstrate to you how the ternary operator works. So it consists of only two things. This question mark and this colon here. And to reiterate from before. Um, yeah. So uh, this is my condition. This is uh, what out would be equal to if the condition was true. And this is what out would be equal to if the condition was false, okay? So now that I got that going, we can go ahead and create uh, the four by one multiplexer now. So I'm going to close this folder and I will open a new folder. And over here, we're gonna go ahead and get started doing uh, part A, finally. So let me go back here, let me go back here. So I will open for A, select this folder. Uh, let me reopen what the lab is. So create the following mo modules, uh, mux4x1.v and mux4x1.tb.v. So mux4x1.v, mux4x1.tb.v. So. I will close this and inside of here I'm going to type this code. So I think it would be good if I put this here and I put this here, right? I wonder if I can make this a little bit larger. Uh, zoom in and then maybe I can move this a little bit this way. But no, I want this to be more like and then maybe I can zoom out of this a little bit. So uh, let's go ahead and type this code. So I'm gonna say module mux uh, underscore four x one. Uh, so the difference here is that uh, since I'm trying to create this multiplexer here, um, so there's gonna be, f uh, there's four input wires and since four is equal to two to the power of two, 
uh, we're going to have two selection wires. Okay, so there's four input wires here and two selection wires here. Okay. So those four input wires are going to be called A, B, C, and D. And now I'm going to have two selection wires, which I'm going to call cell 0 and cell 1. Okay. And then I'm going to have one output wire called out semicolon. And then I'm going to say input A, comma B, comma C, comma D, cell 0, cell 1. And then I have one output wire called output out. Okay. And then I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use the ternary operator in order to do this. Okay. So, um, so looking at this code here, the way that I have this working is that I use nested ternary operators. So if one value was equal to something, then I'm going to return what's in this ternary operator. And if the one value is equal to something else, I'm going to return what's in this ternary operator. So let's write it out and then I'll explain what the code does. Out equals selection one, question mark, something, comma, something. So, uh, so the way that I want to show you how this is going to work, actually. So uh, I think I'm going to need a new window here. New. And I'm going to use this paint.net in order to show you what's going on. So remember here, I'll copy this. And I'll put it here. OK. So. Uh, I really want you to see what's going on here. So the way that this works is that uh, it looks at the way that we're going to split this is that we look at selection one first. If selection one was equal to one, if selection one was equal to one, then what's going to happen here is that uh, I'm going to... Uh, if selection one was equal to one, uh, I would be out. Selection one equaling one would refer to these two here. So when selection one is equal to one, uh, as you can see uh, here and here, uh, I would be outputting either C or D, right? So let's, uh, I'm going to draw a table here real fast. So. Uh, basically, I look at uh, selection one first, okay? Um, if selection one if selection one equals one, I would be doing one thing. If selection one equals zero, I will be doing something else. Okay. So after I do that, uh, I'm going to have something inside of these parentheses. Okay. So the way that this works is that I'm going to have two other ternary operators here. Okay. So after I check selection one, I'm going to be return. If selection one was equal to one, I would be returning whatever's here, right? So the way this is work is I'm going to use another ternary operator and I'm going to check what selection zero is equal to. So I'm going to need a question mark and I'm going to need a colon here. So uh, if selection zero was equal to zero, I'll return one thing. And if, if selection zero was equal to one, I'll return something else. So if it helps you, uh, like turn this into a tree. So this is selection zero. Selection zero. If selection zero was equal to, I'm just gonna copy this. Uh, okay. If selection zero was equal to one, and if selection zero was equal to zero, and if selection zero is equal to one, and selection zero is equal to zero. Basically, what happens is that if selection one is equal to one, and selection one zero is equal to one, this would correspond with 
output being equal to whatever D is, right? So and we can see that in this little diagram here, if selection one is equal to one, so if I went this way, And selection one zero is equal to one, so it goes this way. What I would be outputting is D, right? So this would be D. However, if selection one is equal to one and selection zero is equal to zero, I would be outputting C, right? So this would be C. So let's write that in my code actually. If selection zero was equal to one, I would be outputting D. So D would go between the question mark and the colon. And if selection zero is equal to zero, I would be outputting C, right? However, if selection zero is equal to zero, I would completely ignore what's in here and I'd be outputting something that's in here, right? So that the way so the way that this is gonna work is that if selection zero was equal to zero. But selection zero is equal to one here, I would output B, right? But if selection zero is equal to zero and selection if selection one is equal to zero and selection zero is equal to zero, it would correspond to A, right? So this would be A. So I will I will in this ternary upper here, I'm gonna check what selection zero is equal to. I'm gonna put a question mark here. I'm going to put B, I'm gonna put colon, I'm gonna put A. So that's the way that it works. So I'm gonna finish this off with an and module because uh, that's exactly what we need to do. So um, this is good comments to put uh, when, that, when you're actually typing this lab. So uh, by using nested ternary operators, I can have uh, output equal to whatever four of my four inputs are gonna be, right? So uh, now that uh, I have my multiplexer ready, all I need to do is uh, copy and paste the desk bench, and here's how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna say backtick, backtick time scale, one nanosecond over one nanosecond. Uh, I'm gonna say backtick include, oops, include, uh, and I'm over here, I'm going to say the name of my .v file. So max for x1.v. And over here, I'll say module to take, say my test bench. So I'm going to say max for x1 underscore td. And you know, it's a test bench because there's no open close parentheses there. Uh, so for the four by one multiplexer, if I go back to my paint, there's six inputs total. A, B, C, D, selection one and selection zero. Okay. So I'm gonna say a uh, reg A, B, C, D, cell zero, cell one. Capital O. Oh, no, 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 no capital O. Because capital O is gonna be our output wire, right? So I'm gonna say wire O. And I'm gonna say max uh, underscore four x one u u t a b oh, b c d cell zero cell one. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna set my clock with initial. Again, I'm gonna say dump file, and I'm gonna say mux four x one underscore tb, and that's what my vcd file will be called. And I'm gonna say dump vars. Excuse me, dump vars, not dump cars, <laughs> and. Uh, 
0 comma mux 4x1 underscore td and then right when the clock starts I'm gonna have a equal 0 b equal 1 c equal 0 d equal 1 that's how it's gonna work and then um, so even though a b c and d are not gonna change what is gonna change is my uh, cell 1 and cell 0 so the way is, this is gonna work is that if I put squiggly brackets here and I say cell 1 comma cell 0 this basically treats two one-bit binary numbers as one two-bit binary number so I'm gonna set this equal to the two bit binary number number that's equal to the decimal value of zero then wait 20 nanoseconds and then I'll say I'll do this three more times then I'll change it to one then I'll change this to two then I'll change this to three why am I doing zero one two three uh, it's because um, the zero bit binary number is equal to of zero is equal to zero zero and then zero one one zero one one and these values here is exactly what I want my selection one and selection zeros to be equal to then I will uh, put a little message uh, outputting to the the, the uh, console letting it know that it's complete so I'll say complete like that oops like that and and then I can finish off my test bench by saying and mojo okay so let's see the way this is gonna work um, first I need to save everything then I will control back tick uh, so now I just have to run these commands here. I will copy this. Copy that. Put it here. So that works just fine. I will copy the next command. There we go. And that's a good sign and now I'll say GTK wave and I'll see what's going on here so I will open a new tab I'll click my VCD file uh, I will choose this all right so I have a lot of uh, inputs here so I'm gonna say going from here to here uh, I'm going to append these signals first so a is equal to 0, b is equal to 1, c is equal to 0, d is equal to 1. That's good. And we see that it's not changing any place throughout, right? So the next things I probably want to append is uh, selection 1 and then selection 0. And then what I should find here after I append wire 0 is that um, when selection uh, 1 and selection 0 are 0, 0 respectively, o should be equal to whatever a is, and it is. And then when selection 1 and selection 0 is equal to 0, 1 respectively, O should be equal to whatever B is, which it is, as you can see here. And then when selection 1 and selection 0 is equal to 1, 0 respectively, O should be equal to whatever C is, which it is. And then when selection 1 is equal to 1 and selection 0 is equal to 1, uh, O should be equal to whatever D is, right? And it is, okay? So it looks like we got this to work, and uh, it was actually uh, pretty simple to do too, because we only needed one line to do this. So what we did here is that, uh, well, let me pull up the uh, two by one and the four by one so you can see them side by side. So for the two by one multiplexer, I only used one ternary operator, right? Uh, Maybe I should zoom out a little bit here. Uh, I need to go to view and zoom out. 
How do I zoom out? Appearance. Zoom out. Okay. So for the 2 by one multiplexer, I only used one ternary operator, right? For the 4 by one multiplexer, I used a nested ternary operator. So I had one ternary operator that contains two other ternary operators. One in its uh, condition true and another one in its condition false, okay? So with that, you can probably figure out how you're going to uh, do the 8x1 multiplexer. Now, I'm not going to show you the code. I think you guys are smart enough to figure it out on your own. But basically, what you would do is if I go back to the lab here, um, basically, uh, you see this tree that I drew here? This tree here? Uh, you would do a similar process for part B. Okay? So... If your lab for you is open, blah, blah, blah. Uh, in part A, you created a 4x1 multiplexer that accepts 4 input lines and 2 selection lines. In part B, you'll create an 8x1 multiplexer that accepts 8 input lines and 3 selection lines. Okay? Create a Verilog file dot called mux8x1.v. In it, create a module called mux underscore 8x1 that accepts 11. Uh, oh, excuse me. This is supposed to say inputs. My bad inputs called a b c d e f g h cell 0 cell 1 and cell 2 and then one output called out in the same way that you created your 4 by 1 multiplexer using a set of nested ternary operators to construct your multiplexer use a use a set of nested ternary operators to construct your multiplexer that performs as follows so basically what you got to do i will copy this so if you have trouble doing this, create a tree kind of like the one that I have here. So I'm going to open it up. Wait. New. Put that, put that there. And then if it helps you, uh, on pencil and paper, just draw what the tree might look like. So because uh, selection 2... Uh, so selection two seems to be the branching uh, part first. So if selection two is equal to zero, so if I say selection two, if it's equal to one, uh, like, you, like you kind of see here, when selection two equals one, I'm, out, I'm gonna output either E, F, G, or H, right? So over here, I'm gonna say E, F, G, or H. And then if selection 2 is equal to 0, like it does here, I'm going to output either A, B, C, or D, right? So A, B, C, or D. And then if you draw the tree out, it's going to kind of look like this again. And then uh, I'm going to leave it up to you to draw what the tree actually looks like. It should look something like this. It's just one more level down. And then hopefully uh, you guys would be able to uh, draw what, draw the code for the uh, eight by one multiplexer. So uh, it would be kind of like this, it will only be one line, but this would be kind of larger again, right? And then uh, let me go back to the lab here. Uh, after you figure that out, you're gonna create a Verilog file called mux8 by x by one tb.v create a similar test bench but it accommodates three selection but puts in eight input lines so when you make your test bench for the eight by one multiplexer you'd probably have to you know uh like copy this down here and then put selection two and put in front of selection one and selection zero and instead of going to zero one two three you would go to zero one two three four five six seven you would also change this to 8, this to 8. You would put EFGH here. You put selection 2 here. I think you guys get the process here. So uh, just a couple slight changes, but I think you guys are smart enough to be able to do it. So um, yeah, so all of this is building up for when we eventually build the MIPS data path. So. Uh, yeah, now that you know how the multiplexers work, you can probably visualize 
how it's a good decision making circuit and how the control input feeds the input wires to the multiplexers and have it decide which inputs to be the outputs, right? But yeah, um, so that's it for this lab video. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make the next lab video and uh, I'll, I'll see you guys later. Uh, thanks for watching.